Now, in some cars, it's a luxury to have a cup holder. Never mind two, but in the Range Rover, this has a fridge. One of the many cool gadgets inside a Range Rover. This was the cheapest Range Rover Vogue in the UK. For more than obvious reasons. This Range Rover was involved in an accident where we're pretty confident to say it was rolled and all along this side, there was pretty bad damage. And if you look closely, there still is. Now over the past few months, you guys have been watching me rebuild this where we've managed to find actually fairly cheap parts like the driver's side front door for just 250 pound, including the wing mirror and the rear door as well, which was around 200 quid. Now in the last video, you guys watched me replace this whole dashboard because the passenger side airbag had gone and also the driver's side airbag had gone as well. And at the same time, we managed to do a few upgrades. When I say a few, I mean one, we now have an upgraded screen like what they have in the newer Range Rover models. I had a few issues, one of them being the connectors on the back of this airbag, which we'll sort out in this video, and also, well, it being the wrong colour, hence why it's not yet fitted, because I think we're going to change this. Now, I said this was the cheapest Range Rover Vogue in the UK, and I believe it still is. We haven't really had to spend too much money on it, but that was until today. I'm at the ticket, top of my game, looking down at the rafters. And that's because today the Range Rover is going to be getting a little facelift. Now the regular subscribers will know when I rebuild a car, I like to upgrade the parts where possible. This is an example on the C63. We bought a Black Series kit instead of buying like for like parts. And unfortunately, yet fortunately for me, we have a few damaged parts on the front end, which kind of gives us the excuse to upgrade this thing. But before we get onto that, we've got a bit of unfinished business with the interior. Now, even though we replaced the dashboard to change the passenger side airbag and also the driver's side airbag, there is some parts that we missed and one of them being the rear seat belts. These locked out during the accident and they need to be replaced or reset. Now to remove the rear seat belts was actually a bit of a pig. There's a bolt at the bottom of the belt and then the whole mechanism is stored almost in the top parcel shelf. And to access the bolt at the bottom of the belt, I had to remove the whole rear seats. And with these being heated and also electrically adjustable, you can imagine they were fairly heavy and annoying to remove. Look, I think it's time you start using your comments. But with the rear bench out, I could finally access the bolt at the bottom of the seat belts. <laughs> With those bolts removed, I've just got to access the mechanism part which is stored underneath this trim here. And believe me, to get to that wasn't easy. Pretty much the whole rear panels and trims all had to come out to access that mechanism. And when I finally gained access to it, there was only one bolt holding this seatbelt mechanism in. Once I've done that bolt, I can pull the mechanism out. There's one airbag electrical connector connected to the seatbelt mechanism. I can unclip that and there we go, seatbelt out. Time for a quick hoover up and a quick freshen up with the Cloudburst spray. I use this stuff all the time. It gives such a long lasting scent to your car, your house, the office, your shoes, whatever it may be. All of them replicating your favorite aftershave. I've put a link for all the Cloudburst stuff in the description box below. So if you stink or your car stinks or your shoes or your office stink or something stinks, then spray it with this. Honestly, it's so good and it saved us during that Monaco trip trip, keeping all our cars smelling fresh. Now, would you believe I had to strip out pretty much the whole rear of the interior just to get the seat belts out, which were held in by one single bolt. And I found that they actually have another little baby battery here, which I assume is just the leisure battery for all the electronics inside the car. But wow. Now, the original plan with these was to send them to a company who actually reset them and then they send them back. You can plug in and then they're all good to go. But actually, when I got them out and I checked the part number, which is on the side here. I found a set for 100 quid, so I thought, well, why just save the hassle? But that just means I'm just gonna have to remember how it all went back together by the time the new seat belts arrive. Next up is the airbag. We know that these are pretty expensive, going from 100 pound upwards, and I didn't really wanna spend that just to change the color of it. So we've got Chris, who is an expert at painting. As you can see, he painted his car. Well, it was supposed to be green, turn out yellow. This is gonna be black. <laughs> so, so this is gonna be blue then? Yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You want it blue, is what black, you're saying. Black, blue. please. Blue.
And there we go, one airbag transformed from cream to black and it cost me absolutely nothing because Chris is not getting paid. Now some of you watching may not even dream of buying a car which has previously been in a crash. You just don't see it plausible. But what if I told you there's so many people driving cars out there which they pay top money for and they have little knowledge that they've been in such a bad accident. But there's now a way of finding out and that way of finding out is called Car Vertical who has sponsored today's video. Now Car Vertical works in over 20 different countries and it gathers data from so many places. There's no hiding a dodgy car from Car Vertical. Check out this Mercedes SL. After I popped in the registration or VIN number, I can see at the top of the report there's been no mileage fraud it's not been reported as stolen, but there is an amber light for accident, and there's also no finance on it. Now, the interesting thing about this one is when you scroll down, I can see the damage was reported in March 2020. Then further down the report, I can see that there was an MOT on the car in 2021, and it was for sale in August 2021. So it's definitely back on the road. I can see all the mileage lines up here, and then the big part, the damage. Check this out. These are the photos from the car crash auction website when the car was auctioned off. That crash bar is in a different postcode to the car. And what's even better than that, I can now see the photos of when it was repaired and put on sale. What a huge difference. And just to show you what a good report looks like, here's a report on my E46 M3. All green lights at the top, all the mileage, all lines up as you can see here, and there's no reports for damage. So to check your car out or a car that you're potentially about to buy, you can click the link in the description box below. And with help from my link, you're going to save yourself a nice bit of cash as well and hopefully you won't be buying any lemons like well myself so before i put the airbag back in i've wired in some new connectors because if you remember when we changed the dashboard and the airbag i had to break these connectors to get them out of the steering wheel because they sort of melted in these ones are actually from a mercedes i couldn't find range rover plugs don't ask me how i knew how these would interchange i i just found them on ebay they look the same i hope they work they've just got a plug into the back of this um, airbag here and then that should be it all for the airbag situation minus the light on the dashboard and of course the seat belts as well Okay, so now we have a full black interior, looking fresh. Everything works. We do still have an airbag light on, along with loads of other lights, which we'll get to, but the airbag light, I think, would be to do with the rear seat belts being out. But other than that, we're making progress. Oh yeah, and we also have a strange fault, which I've not really come across before. I don't know whether this fault has occurred since I replaced the airbags or since I replaced the inner tie rod, but it's a strange fault, but I just feel like something needs to be reset. I don't think it's the clock spring because all the controls on the steering wheel do work I can volume up volume down the paddles work and everything works on the steering wheel so the clock springs all in good order but check this out I can turn one and a half there so and then we go back to the center when we're back in the center I can turn about just over half and there's a bit of resistance a tiny bit of resistance and as soon as I just go past that resistance there we go. We get a fault for stability control, IES, adaptive dynamics fault, and ABS fault, HDC fault. A lot of faults come off when I go past that resistance, but then it will still go one and a half turns afterwards. It's just a resistance on that point. I just can't work out what's wrong with it. But now we can move on to the cool stuff and the stuff that I've been looking forward to doing. Now what we have here is a full SVO body kit for the Range Rover. Now the Range Rover SVO body kit looks a little bit like this. Now the actual body kit wasn't expensive considering the amount of parts that you actually get with it. Around 1500 quid you get a front bumper, a rear bumper, a grill, side panels and all sorts of stuff. And what's even better, everything here is all plastic, not fiberglass because we all know how fiberglass goes. Now this would have been a nice and cheap upgrade until I had one of my thoughts. Now I could have easily bought a body kit for a 2015 Range Rover Vogue, like what I have and it would have been a like for like swap. But instead, I bought a body kit for a 2018 Range Rover Vogue, and as you guys would know, they facelift the model in 2018, which means not only are we gonna be fitting the body kit, we're also gonna be facelifting it as well, which is where it gets a little expensive. 
So to facelift the Range Rover, of course we need to change the headlights, which we'll get onto. My worst nightmare. But before we even start attacking the headlights, we've got to get off the damaged parts. And a few bolts were a little difficult, as you can see me angle grinding them off now. I've got to remove the front bumper, which again was a pretty easy job. I'm just hoping that there's no damage behind the bumper that I didn't expect. There's a few bolts on the top of the grill that need to be removed. Once the grill's removed, there's a load of 8 mils on the bumper. And once they're undone, I can pull the bumper away from the car, disconnecting the electrical connectors, the parking sensors, and the headlight washers. And luckily for me, the only damage which I knew about before was this front lower radiator. It's a little tatty, but it is working. It just seems the bracket that's holding it is shattered to a million pieces. And here's the new bracket, which was actually donated from a subscriber. So thanks so much for that. Okay, so the bumper is off and luckily there doesn't seem to be any damage behind it apart from the intercooler bit, but we've sorted that now and that's all nice and secure. The intercooler is a little tatty, but it will do the job. It's not a performance car, so we'll definitely get away with that intercooler. I've never seen this before though. This looks like it electronically opens for extra cooling or something. It's, I've, I've never seen that before, but I'll tell you one thing, it is a good job that we are actually replacing these headlights because, well... The, the, none of the clips are intact and that is just loose as anything. Now this is where the facelift part becomes expensive. On the newer Range Rover they have different headlights as opposed to these ones and apparently a different bonnet along with different rear lights as well. And as you can imagine the most expensive part out of all of those parts was of course the headlights. And believe me I am not very happy with the price I paid for these. So these headlights are off the 2018 model and these are brand new second hand and if only they just plugged in directly into the 2015 model, but they don't and that's why I paid the price I did. So these headlights look sharper, they've got nice daytime running lights in them and they've been opened up and rewired to hopefully plug and play directly into the 2015 model. But as I mentioned, these are not brand new headlights and just look at all these tabs which have been sort of glued together and well, not the nicest of finish, especially around the back here. I don't even know what's happened there. I wouldn't be so bothered, but when you spend £3,500 for a pair of headlights, you expect them to be a little bit better. Why did I even start this? So we're on to removing the remains of the old headlights. The new headlights seem to take the shape of the old front wings, so we don't need to replace the wings. It's only the bumper, bonnet, and grille that needs to be replaced. The new headlight just slots back into place and uses all the original mounts. And look at the difference. Completely modernizing the front of the Range Rover. One more headlight to go. And now with both headlights in, there's a little wiring trickery that needs to be done. There's no instructions with these headlights. I'm just taking a guess here and hoping it'll work. There's a two pin connector which connects to the left headlight, which goes all the way along and then connects to a two pin connector on the right hand side headlight. And then we have this wire here, a red fused wire and then a blue connector and a red connector. The blue connector connects into the left hand side headlight, the red connector connects into the right hand side headlight and then I'm assuming the red wire which is fused just goes to a live cable. And the only live cable that I can clearly see which is obvious is the little positive battery terminal thing at the front of the engine. So I'm just going to temporarily connect it up to there first just to see if everything works and then we can sort a permanent connection out. That is looking sick. Like the headlights make such a huge difference to a car. Now we've just got to find out whether it works. We've got the most sketchiest wiring possible onto the positive part, but I just want to see whether it works. And if it does, then we can wire it in properly. Uh, let's find out. Yes. Where's indicators? Is that working? Oh, I can see it. Yes! Full beat. Come on! Yes! 
What a result. Now it's time to mount it permanently. Under that battery terminal connector, there is a stud and a nut. So I'm gonna undo that nut, wire in a little circular connector, I'm not sure what they're actually called. Slot that over the stud and then bolt it all to it permanently and hide it all away so it looks neat. Once that's all on, I can bolt the battery terminal piece down and you wouldn't even know it was there. Time to hide all the wiring. I'm gonna use some loom tape on the other part of the wiring just to neaten it up a bit. Tuck it all underneath the trims and job is a good one. And there we go, the new headlights in, the expensive headlights in. You wouldn't even know that there was all wiring tucked under this, apart from this fused wire here, which sits nicely into this little box there. But it all works. Now I was told by the guy who sold me this kit that if I was doing a facelift conversion, I'd also need a new bonnet. And at first I couldn't really work out why I'd need a new bonnet. Looking at the newer one to this one, the bonnet looks exactly the same. But check this out, when you close the bonnet here, you can see it is coming a tad too short. So the actual bonnet is meant to sit on this lip here. When you push down the bonnet, it is well. It is quite a bit shorter on both sides. So, I mean, I can only see the difference is gonna be a tiny bit of length, unless something on the grill is different as well, but that's just unfortunate. And the actual hard part about this is, actually finding a 2018 bonnet is ridiculously hard. There's quite a few people breaking Range Rovers, but no one seems to have the bonnet, so it seems like we're gonna have to wait for that. Now the first part of the body kit, which is the front bumper. This should make a huge difference and there's loads of trims to bolt onto the bumper to complete it, including the headlight washers both sides. The parking sensors and a bunch of other trims. Once they are all on, I can mount it up against the car just to see what it looks like for the first sort of fitting. Okay, so we're missing a few parts. Quite obviously, there is a grill which is missing. I thought the grill would come with the kit, but it seems obvious now that you just use the original grill and this would be for a 2018 and mine's a 2015, so the 2015 grill doesn't fit this model anymore, so I've had to order a grill, and of course, we need a bonnet. We also need these little headlight things because I guess you would have used the original ones, which you've taken off. Obviously, mine's different, so that doesn't work. I still need to bolt on all these bottom bits as well, but overall, as a first fit, you can sort of see where we're going with this thing, and it is starting to look so sick. Like, this bumper is a lot lower than the stock bumper, so it's just making it look way more aggressive and lower as it is already. And that is just the start of it. There's still so much more to go on. There's things which go on the side of the door to make it look wider. I also need to get some little side steps for it as well. There's a rear bumper, there's exhaust tips. There's so much more. But check out those new headlights. They look so much better than the old ones. It literally has changed the front of the car completely already. If you bear in mind that this bonnet is, well, it's not the right bonnet, but that is looking so much better already. So I've still got so much more to crack on with. We've run out of time today, but if you've enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up button, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out. Well, we'll let's see. go Halfords and get a rattle can. <laughs>